Hello and welcome everybody to this episode of the REBT Advocates with Dr. Michael R. Edelstein. You can find his book at therebt.life or you can find him and contact him at 3minutetherapy.com. And me, Tommy Bateman, a counselor in the Richmond, Virginia area. You can contact us both by emailing rebtadvocates at gmail.com. Please send us your, your hate, your love, your questions, your comments, your concerns, and things that strike you because we use that as episode fodder. Thank you very much for those that have. And in fact, we're gonna use one right now. Steve, Steve, we love you, because you asked a really good question. Um, I know we emailed you back, but you know what? We're gonna talk about this on the, on the uh, podcast. Michael, but before I get started on that, do you have anything to say? Uh, well, I wanted to uh, read, before we get to Steve's questions, I wanted to read, uh, another thing Steve added, and that was, uh, he says, perhaps you could talk about this on the REBT Advocates. Keep up the great work. Thanks, Steve. Well, thank you, Steve. I'm glad you're enjoying the podcast. And since Tommy and I plan to live indefinitely, these will be going on for quite some time. That's the plan. Yeah, it will be keeping going. So on that note, let's get begin. Steve asked a pretty, pretty succinct question, and I appreciate it. Hi, Michael and Tommy. I'm having some difficulties with disputing. Mm. How do you make a distinction between a really strong preference and a must? Oh man, that's a good question. I find that if I dispute a strong preference instead of a must, the disputing does not turn out um, that well. Big reason for that. Perhaps you could talk about this on the REBT Advocates. Keep up the great work. Thanks, Steve. Didn't Michael just say that? Anyway, so that's the question. Michael, let's take that apart. So the first question is, how do you make a distinction between a strong preference and a must? Uh, well, actually, I'd like to answer an implied question, but not asked. Okay. And he says, I am having some difficulties with disputing. So for our new viewers, I'd like to unpack that a little. And what Steve is referring to is the term disputing we use in REBT and often comes from the, what I call the three minute exercises, the ABCs, what Albert Ellis called the rational self-help form. And uh, quickly, and we discussed this in detail on other episodes, but quickly the ABC works like this. A is an activating event or some adversity. B is some irrational belief that leads to C and B is this adversity must not happen. And then that leads to C, undesirable emotional consequences or behavioral consequences such as depression. Then we go on to D, E, and F, and D is what's in question here with Steve, and D stands for disputing or questioning the irrational belief such as why must this diversity not happen? What is the evidence? Prove it. Where is it written? Then we have E, effective new philosophy, where you think about the must and see there's no evidence for it. And in E, you write all the reasons why the must is false, of which there are many. And then finally, that leads you to F, your new feeling, which if you uh, think it through and it's meaningful, often it'll be less depression or great concern, disappointment, not depression. So Steve is talking about the D, the disputing. Uh, so that is the uh, background. And disputing normally means uh, questioning the irrational belief, being a little scientist and asking for the evidence. And usually so, what we're attacking in this are demands. That's what we're, what we're going after here. And Steve um, is wondering, well, I mean, what's the difference? How can we tell if they're the must or demand there versus a, uh, a strong preference? Well, let me put it in the form of a B or a belief. I strongly prefer this doesn't happen, right? Then the next one, a, a must or a demand, this must not happen. We see the difference there in, in, uh, in just the wording, but when we get to disputing, it's gonna become even clearer what the differences are uh, because we ask the question, where's the evidence? And what happens with that, Michael? Yeah, well, um, I just wanted to make a comment first preliminarily about uh, the distinction between a real strong preference and a must. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, there are many ways to distinguish it. And it's a good question because uh, a lot of people new to REBT ask this question. And a must or demand leads to certain consequences, which you can observe, 
whereas a preference leads to very different consequences. And some of the consequences from a demand include if you demand this adversity much must not happen, you tend to dwell, ruminate, and obsess about the consequences or about the belief. It tends to lead to fixed or rigid behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, it tends to lead to either compulsive striving, uh, you work overtime uh, to try to change things, or you withdraw or give up. And uh, it leads to disturbed emotions, such as anxiety, guilt, hurt, anger, depression, hopelessness, resentment, anger, and hostility. And uh, it tends to lead to unreasonable procrastination, addictions, and perfectionism, whereas strong preferences lead to constructive problem solving rather than dwelling, leads to creative experimentation with possible solutions rather than fixed behavior, assertiveness and determination rather than withdrawing or compulsively striving, uh, intense appropriate emotions such as sorrow, regret, disappointment, frustration, dislike, annoyance, determination, passion, uh, rather than the disturbed emotions. It tends to lead to hopefulness rather than hopelessness, flexible thinking and acting, and very importantly, unconditional self, other, and life acceptance, and the ability to enjoy life somewhat in the face of failure, criticism, and loss, rather than depression or anxiety that tends to shroud everything. So uh, those are various hallmarks you can look for if you're not sure if you have a strong preference or a demand. I see. So what you're saying is one way of looking at it is to observe the seas or the consequences in and of themselves, which should be pretty revelatory. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So um, kind of what I was hinting at in my last uh, talk there, not to just derail it and take this over, like I, I own the REBT advocates, which I mean, whatever. Um, so I asked, where's the evidence, right? So when you're disputing and why he had trouble disputing a strong preference versus a must is, is simply because when I asked the question, where is the evidence for my strong preference? You know, I strongly prefer that this doesn't happen. Where is the evidence of that? Oh, it's right here. The evidence exists. I, I actually do strongly prefer that something doesn't happen. I can't, I can't dispute that. So the disputing ends. That's a rational thought to strongly prefer things, right, Michael? I mean, it results in, uh, in strong, rational emotions. But let's go to the must. Where is oh. the evidence that this, this thing must not happen? I must not wreck my car. I must not lose money. Whatever it is, I must not fail to speak properly into this microphone and not ramble on and on and on and on like I do. As, you know, I must not do that. Where's the evidence that that should not happen? Well, it's not here. Because um, I'm not the controller of the universe. I can't make things happen. I can't say this must not happen. Um, where is the evidence? There's nothing etched in stone anywhere that's saying these things must not happen. Our common experiences shows that, the, uh, that uh, these things happen all the time, these undesirable things, whatever your undesirable thing is. So that's the difference is that it's actually disputable. There's, there's, there's evidence saying that, it's, um, that it doesn't exist, that it's an irrational thought, whereas a strong preference there's evidence that that does exist, and it's right there. Yes, Tommy, uh, that's very good. And the evidence is your goals, values, or preferences. Mm -hmm. So if you say, I prefer to avoid adversity, the evidence is because you don't like adversity, you get disadvantages uh, if you have adversity and advantages if you don't. And for you, based on your values, uh, the disadvantages outweigh the advantages. That's why you prefer to avoid it. Uh, so that's what is meant by the evidence is here. The evidence is in your advantages and disadvantages based on your preferences. So there's always evidence for the preference. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a preference. Mm -hmm. uh, another note here is that the three-minute exercises or ABCs are only for disturbance, as, as Tommy pointed out, if you have a preference, really, it ends right there. We're not trying to get you over your preferences because they don't lead to emotional disturbances. Uh, we're trying to help you get over your musts and shoulds, which lead to emotional disturbances. So uh, use the three-minute exercise when you have 
undesirable emotions or, un, uh, or unconstructive behaviors. Uh, and that's what it's for, to uproot your demands, your global evaluations, your can't stand it itis, not to uproot your preferences. Yeah. And, and let's say, um, just a kind of a final note for me, uh, uh, um, you can, there is a kind of a form of disputing preferences, right? But it's not an REBT thing. This is kind of a, a cost benefit analysis, or maybe we look at the things that we think are costs and the things we think are benefits and compare them. So is it true that let's say I, I, my, my thought, I strongly prefer not to uh, eat chocolate. I strongly prefer not to eat chocolate. Now that's a perfectly rational statement, but the thing is I've never had chocolate before, so I really don't know. So I think irrationally or maybe un, un, uh, without truth that chocolate doesn't taste good, even though I never had it. Everybody gets, everybody that has it, you know, they die, that sort of thing. And that's, that's the basis for my preference. Maybe I can dispute that with uh, new evidence and be, come up with a completely different preference. But that is outside of REBT. That is a, a diff, that's a cost benefit analysis. That's something completely different but that's a way of help setting goals, help setting preferences. Uh, that is not necessarily the ABC of, uh, of uh, getting over uh, emotional disturbances. Okay, very good. Uh, I think that wraps it up. And uh, thank you again, Steve, for your great question. Feel free to continue asking questions and we are likely to answer your question on the advocates in the future. So please send them in. And please comment below, ask questions, give us a like, support us on Patreon, and subscribe to the REBT Advocates to stay on the rational side of life.